Welcome back for another great episode of Talks to Tatiana. And today we're talking to someone very special in my life, and that's Amber. Amber, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Tatiana. I'm so excited to finally get to be here. Awesome. Yeah. Um, it's great to have you. It's great to uh, share your story. I don't know. I don't know a lot of it. I know some of it, but I'm excited to learn more about how you got onto this entrepreneurial journey and what you've learned kind of in the process. So um, talk a little bit about what you do now. What is um, what is the work you do and who you work with? And obviously not name names, but who you work with and how do you help them move forward? Yeah, so I am a launch manager and social strategist. So basically what I do is I work with specifically authors and speakers who are looking to build a platform, elevate their voice, um, and launch usually a book, but also that evolved into a lot of product launches over the last couple of years for me as well. Awesome. That's terrific. And you've helped uh, you've helped me, me with my book launch and then the anniversary and we're going to be doing basically an anniversary special every year um, on with my book. And so I think that it's an important work because being an author is not a simple thing. It's not a an easy thing to do. It requires a lot of commitment, a lot of uh, patience, I think, and also really a lot of um, time and money is involved usually. And so um, having someone like you support with the launch and with relaunches and things like that is really important because it really makes our lives as authors easier, but also <clears throat> helps spread the message and share the message with those who need it most. So um, it's terrific work that you do. And so how did you get to that? Where did you start on your journey, life um, or entrepreneurial or both? Yeah. So, you know, my journey has actually been quite the maze. I uh, grew up in an entrepreneurial family. So my parents both worked from home when I was very, very young. So I never grew up seeing people going to work nine to five. Um, You know, my parents had an office at our house and, um, you know, we were raised to just start working in the business very, very young. So I actually started my own um, business when I was about 12 years old. I sold wedding gowns. I worked for Um, a nonprofit where we would uh, resell wedding gowns and then donate that money to women who were battling breast cancer. Um, That really kind of spiked my love for sales and marketing um, because there's a lot of marketing that was really involved in that job. Um, But, you know, as a kid, you don't really identify that you love marketing. So, um, you know, I I went to college for uh, several years and got Uh, my degree in psychology and social work, because I really loved people. But I kept feeling that call of, you know, starting a business, being an entrepreneur, helping people in some kind of way. Um, And so I actually was pulled in in 2017 to the publishing world um, by my parents. So they started their own publishing company, and they needed somebody to help project manage for them. Um, And really quickly, I just found out that Um, You know, authors, not only are they carrying all of this creative weight, but, you know, they have such a bigger opportunity at their feet that they just don't really realize because they're in the thick of, you know, trying to get this beautiful message out. And so uh, I very quickly was able to see that I had a skill for identifying where people, you know, maybe could start building community, where people could start taking the messaging from their book and turning it into something that they could monetize and Um, you know, something that would really build a solid speaking platform for them, giving them courses or products that they could uh, move forward with. And so, you know, basically from 2017, a lot of my focus has been on authors, has been on speakers, has been on trying to put amazing thought leaders out there in the world and help them find people to rally around them, support them, and, and really just push their own message. That's awesome. And how did you, um, been finding the entrepreneurial journey um, so far, meaning um, I know that you homeschool your kids or um, you've partially homeschooled them for, you know, off and on. Um, How was that process? How did you get into that? And also, um, I think that it's an important, um, I guess, point to know to for someone who's listening, maybe who's considering something like that, like, Talk a little bit about your experience and and kind of the pros and cons of that, too. Yes. So uh, definitely with, you know, 
being a mom, there comes this different level of seriousness about, you know, being an entrepreneur, you have to really understand balancing, um, you know, your time with parenting. And so I was homeschooled myself. So I had kind of this nice introduction to what that actually could look like. So, you know, because I got that peek behind the curtain, it was really easy when, um, you know, we started seeing problems popping up in my daughter's school when she was in first grade to just pull her out of school and have her learning right beside me. Um, You know, when I was a kid, part of our homeschooling journey was to work along with our parents and learn the ins and outs of business. And so I really, really like cherish those memories as a kid. uh, And I wanted my children to have the same experiences. And so, you know, we did try to go back to public schooling last year, but it just didn't work out for us. We're too, um, you know, free spirited. We just have too much kind of like this creative energy to be tied down to public school. Um, and so, you know, it's it's constantly this kind of fun journey and juggle of, you know, managing your time, managing the kids. But, you know, with homeschooling, you really get to turn that into whatever kind of adventure you want. And so a lot of our homeschooling comes with, um, you know, what am I doing at work? What is what does it look like to build a community? What does it look like to, you know, even with some of my simple tasks of managing social media, I can teach that to my kids and help them, you know, step into a pretty early career. You know, you could start doing social media management in high school and make money. And so I emphasize that stuff a lot with my children of, you know, hey, there's tons of career opportunities just because you're a child doesn't mean, you know, you can't be an entrepreneur too. So a lot of our school mimics, um, you know, what my schooling looked like as a kid and it involves a lot of education, but, um, you know, it's not always easy. I'm really lucky. I have a very supportive partner and I have very, very receptive children. So, um, you know, they love the idea of being at home and and learning the ins and outs of business and things like that. So, um, you know, but in general, I think that it's really helped me kind of get better at time management, get better at um, helping other moms see the possibility. You know, I have friends that come to me all the time and they're like, you know, I can't wait till my kids start school so that I can start a career. And I'm living proof that, you know, you don't have to wait till your kids start school to start a career. You can really just start looking into your passion and just bring them with you. Just kind of teach them as you go and, you know, don't make the homeschooling journey very complicated. Um, It sounds easier than I think it is, but I would be curious and I've always been curious about it. Just never really considered um, like the questions and, you know, the I want to take the conversation into this direct to this direction because um, in this direction, because I think that maybe many people can be potentially considering it. Um, And I'm curious, how do you get to your child getting a diploma at the end of that um, so that they can go to college if they want to? Yeah. So there's a ton of different avenues to be able to do that, actually. Um, And so, you know, you could go a very simple route and just have your kid take a GED test at 16. They can graduate early. Um, You can have your child do some sort of distance charter education where you're checking in with a teacher monthly um, and you're turning in work samples and things like that. And so they're helping kind of keep transcripts and and things accountable and, and show the state that you're making benchmarks. Or you as a parent can personally handle that. What I That's how I personally choose to do it. We have a Google folder where I just keep some of our best work. We you know, look at what the standard benchmarks are for our grade level. And I try to you know, show sample works of math, history, writing, reading, um, that kind of thing. And then we just save them in a folder. And then at the end of your homeschooling journey, you basically just apply for your diploma and you prove that your child has graduated. And the proof of that is honestly very simple. I oversave things, you know, because I they're good memories for me. But really, it's just you as a parent have to show that your child has completed the grade. And, and that's it, especially here in the state of Texas. It's extremely easy. Wow, that's interesting. Um, cool. And so um, I would be curious to know, like, how do you get so much patience to <laughs> um to work you know like it's it's hard enough to have them um be in school for six hours a day like how do you um do work and and life kind of at the same time like how does that work what does that look like yeah well so when they were really little i you know i had to be much more flexible and you know 
back when my kids were little, I didn't know anything about book launches or strategy or anything like that. And honestly, I would have done anything to be introduced to your course in bookkeeping because that's exactly what I needed. And so I did a lot of silly stuff. Like I did surveys constantly. I was a mystery shopper. I helped people make freezer meals. So I would just make like 50 meals and then sell them to people like so I did the craziest stuff when my kids were really little to like make money and get through and I did stuff that like I could really adjust around their own schedule um, and then when I put my daughter in kindergarten and first grade I wasn't good at dealing with the school schedule because I had to stop everything I was doing and do pick up and drop off and you know then there was like the midday teacher you know you need to be the room parent and it was just like a lot for me so for me having them in public school was way more overwhelming I felt like I was always on somebody else's time, always on somebody else's schedule. Um, you know, when I have them here homeschooling, like we start our day at nine o'clock, they wake up, they get dressed, they eat breakfast. You know, my kids are eight and 13. So they, we've thankfully gotten in a pretty good routine. Um, and while they're doing their thing, you know, I'm up much, much earlier working, getting everything organized for our day. And then by 10 o'clock, they know that it's time to start school. And I usually disconnect from work for a couple of hours to try to get them plugged into school, make sure that there's nothing that they need to support, kind of help them set up for the day. And then I just jump back into work from like noon to three while they're working on the stuff that they already know that they have to do. And then I have to take like another break. And then usually I'm back on the computer from like seven to nine at night. Um, you know, and it, I'm really lucky because my clients are all very kind and understanding that, you know, I'm a mom and my schedule is not in my control. But, you know, honestly, I think that I worked way, way more chaotic when the kids were in school and I had to be reliant on that bell schedule. And so and when you, let's say, work from seven to nine, um, what do the kids do during that time? And when do you actually spend time together? Yeah. So, you know, it's interesting. Like when they were little, I felt way more mom guilt about, you know, the time that I wasn't able to spend with them. And thankfully I have a laptop. So, you know, my work time can be me sitting on the couch watching a show with my son or, you know, him reading a book next to me. And so I'm like working, but I'm still there. Now that they're older, honestly, I have to beg them to spend more time with me. It's like, you know, mom, can I go watch a show? Can I play on the PS4? Can I, you know, go talk to my friends? And so it's like, you know, now I just feel like I have all of this free time all of the time. <laughs> um, and I have to like beg them to, to come hang out with me. Um, but I've, I've gotten to the point in my life where pretty strictly I do not work on a Saturday um, or and most of Sunday. And so the kids know that Saturday is all day them. Um, and honestly, I think we all kind of enjoy because we have such a low key homeschooling journey. I think we all kind of enjoy the time we get to spend together doing that because, you know, it's a lot of group activity. It's like going to the library, going on a field trip, you know, watching a group movie or documentary or something like that. So, um, you know, we kind of incorporate that family time into, you know, school time. And I even get to kind of have it in with work time too. That's cool. That's awesome. Um, and so that's really, it's really interesting, giving me a lot of thoughts to think about. Um, and so talk a little bit about if you can share, um, if you can, um, kind of how, if you could go back in time and maybe change one thing or tell your younger self one thing, what would that be? Yeah, I mean, I really think it's to just let go of all of the mom guilt. I think that we as moms carry just endless amounts of guilt for no reason. You know, when I had my daughter young and I had guilt for that and I had, you know, a divorce early on in their their young lives and I have guilt for that. And, you know, but it's like if you meet my kids, they seem none the worse for wear. And at the end of the day, I look at my life today and I look at what we have built um, you know, and it's, it's just so much more beautiful than what I could have imagined. And so I think back to all of the times where I sat up late at night, just, you know, crying, looking at my little babies, just feeling so bad for not being able to give them what I thought at the time was like the perfect life. Um, you know, that, that was just a waste of time. Like they didn't care about that. They didn't notice it. They didn't think about it. And ultimately, had if I had committed to what I thought at the time when I was 20 years old, first time being a mom, what the perfect life would, I think I would have been miserable. I think I needed to grow. I think I needed to learn. 
um, you know, what really being a mom was. I had a lot of experience with kids when I was little, but that's so different when you actually have your own kids. You know, you could take every class, babysit every person on the planet, but once you have your own little humans that are yours, you, everything about you just shifts and changes. And, you know, so I think that the biggest thing is just letting go of some of that guilt and knowing that, you know, your kids see you and they see how hard you're trying. And, you know, even my own parents who were less than perfect, I look back and I have so much admiration for how hard they worked. And I see how much that reflects in who I am as a person today. And so I can only hope that, you know, my kids can do the same thing and that they'll grow up and be solid and they can be like, mom always had me, always had my back. And, you know, that there was nothing for me to feel guilty about. That's awesome. That's, uh, that's really great. Um... I wanted to ask you kind of if you if you can pick one thing looking back what is the one main thing that you're grateful for in your life both you know business personal both um what is the biggest I guess thing for you that maybe if it wasn't there would have prevented you from living the life that you live now um, well, so, you know, like very personally and raw in 2019, my whole life fell apart. I had a divorce from a marriage that I was in for 10 years and it was, you know, my childhood sweetheart. So it was like, since I was eight years old, kind of assumed that that was the person I was going to grow old with and marry. But, you know, after years and years, it just couldn't make it work. And so, um, I was also fired from my job in publishing by my parents. Um, and so it was like a huge slap in the face, slap in the ego, um, and it was one of the, th this times where it was just like, you just look at your life and you wonder what your value is and what, you know, what you're even doing here. And so, you know, I think that was the biggest life lesson because, you know, I was kind of in this crossroads where, you know, my marriage ended, I lost my job. My, I was literally on the cusp of homelessness, just bouncing around in a hotel with my kids trying to figure out like, okay, I can either call it quits. I can go get a job at Starbucks, at Target, at, you know, whatever, working some sort of retail job. And I can just go and try to, you know, make my nine to five income so that I can support the kids. Or I can pivot and go full force, knowing that I actually do bring a lot of value to my clients, to my authors, knowing that just because this one situation did not work out for me, doesn't mean that there isn't possibilities. And so I had a couple of very dear mentors that, you know, just refused to let me fall into a hole. And so, um, you know, they very quickly made a connection to me to a couple of clients. And then, um, you know, before I know it, I had a client who signed on for a $500 retainer. And then the next thing I know, I had another client that signed on for a $2,000 retainer. And then before I knew it, you know, before 2000, the end of 2019, I was 100% fully self-reliant, making more money than I have ever made in my life. That's awesome. Um, and so, okay, that's really, that's really, thanks so much for sharing that. It's a really great story. And I think that um, some people can relate to that. I know that a lot of people can relate to that. Maybe there's someone out there who's listening and maybe they're pregnant and they're by themselves. Um, maybe they have small children and they're by themselves and trying to survive. What would you recommend that their first step should be if they feel the way you felt back then in 2019? Yeah, my best recommendation, invest in yourself. Know that, um, you know, you really are the best bet. You are the person that is going to be able to create your own success. Invest in yourself, even if it's scary. Um, you know, even if you don't have the funds to do it, find out other ways to be able to invest in yourself. For me, I didn't have money right away. So I found volunteer opportunities that would lead into training opportunities, um, you know, that ultimately would pay for me to be able to invest in myself. You know, you don't have to pick a skill because it sounds extremely exciting and fun. Sometimes you need to just go with something because it's a fun, easy, low hanging fruit that's going to put food on the table. Um, and so you have to just be willing to invest in yourself to find that. And that's the biggest advice I think I could give any mom. Awesome. I love it. Um, I'm actually going to share your bio and share your, um, social media handles so that people can connect and find you. And for those who are listening, um, and who are 
curious about working with you. Talk a little bit about how what what's the best way to connect with you and um, how you can help and support them and who they that person is, so that if someone like that is listening, they can relate to um, to that and know. Oh, okay, I need her. I need this, um, and reach out and connect with you. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, if you're an author and you're getting ready to launch your book, definitely reach out. I love to connect on Instagram, but you can also reach me on Facebook. Um, and also, if you're a mom who is thinking about homeschooling, like reach out to me and let's have a conversation. I love talking homeschooling and I'm willing to help with anything. I've done all kinds of different avenues. I've had tons of different experiences with it. And so, um, you know, I just want to continue to let people know you can homeschool, you can run a business. Uh, like, let me show you how. That's awesome. Thanks so much, Amber. Thanks so much for being a great guest, for sharing your story. Uh, I've actually learned a lot of interesting things and I've been thinking about homeschooling for some time. It's not something that I will personally manage, uh, but maybe it's something that we could set up with because there is a lot of aids out, out there, you know, available at some point. Um, I would, I've been definitely curious about that. Um, so thanks so much for sharing all of that and, and sharing some great advice for moms and maybe moms to be out there who are looking for a way out maybe. Um, and I think that your advice investing in yourself, I think is the most important part. Um, because if there's anyone else out there that you can invest in, that's you. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me, Tatiana. Um, it's been a pleasure. And for those of you who are watching the Links and bio will be um, underneath the video. And if you're listening on the podcast, feel free to check out the show notes and you'll find that information there. Otherwise, we will see you next week for another great interview and talk soon.